Right, so hello and welcome back to Books and Things and welcome to my March wrap up. So today I'm going to be talking about all the books that I read in the month of March. So March was a pretty good reading month for me. I read nine books in March, which isn't that good in comparison to what I was reading in 2016, but in comparison to what I read in January and February is pretty good. Also, I really loved everything I read, like it wasn't a bad book among the months and I read a lot of brilliant, brilliant books this month. Several of them were rereads, but they were very brilliant and enjoyable rereads. So yes, I'm very excited to tell you about the books that I read this month. So to start off as always with the classics, the first book I read in the month of March was Jane Eyre by Charlotte Bronte. This was a reread, this was the fourth or fifth time I've reread it, I think. I only reread this for my not so hypothetical Victorian literature course project slash hashtag Viclet, which I will link the video of that down below, which I compare Jane Eyre and Great Expectations for quite a really long time. I really thoroughly enjoyed reading it. I love this book a lot and it was really nice to read it again. If you don't know what Jane Eyre is about, it's about a woman called Jane Eyre, obviously. At the beginning of the book she's about 10 years old and she's being brought up by her aunt who doesn't really like her and she feels very excluded from the family. She's sent away to school and then when she's about 18 years old she becomes a governess and goes to this place called Thornfield to look after a young girl called Adele who is the ward of a mysterious man called Mr Rochester and everything goes on from there. It is a buildings romance and it is a love story and it is a gothic novel and it is a mystery and it is so many glorious things and I love it a lot. It was really nice to reread this because it's the first time I've reread Jane Eyre since I read Villette. Villette is another novel by Charlotte Bronte which I absolutely love and I think I probably prefer to Jane Eyre and because I was so amazed by Villette I think I kind of forgot that Jane Eyre is really good as well so it was really nice to reread Jane Eyre and remember how brilliant it is. Jane Eyre was the starting point for all of my love of 19th century literature so it has a very strong hold in my heart. Yes I love this so so much. The dialogue between Jane and Rochester is just like the best literary flirting ever. That and like Lizzie Darcy in Pride and Prejudice, just like top-notch literary flirting. Anyway. The next classic I read in March was also a reread and was also for that not so hypothetical Victorian literature course video and that was Great Expectations by Charles Dickens. I flew through this, oh it was great, and I read like the last 200 pages I read basically in one sitting and that was lovely because it's just so, it's such a delicious brilliant book. I'd forgotten how good it was actually. I think I probably preferred it now than the last time I read it five years ago because the character of Pip the central character is, is a bit annoying and not a very nice person for quite a lot of the book. And I think on my first and second readings of Great Expectations I found this quite annoying. But now I think I appreciated that more and I got more all of the, the distinction between the kind of present Pip who's doing the action and the kind of narrator Pip who's looking back and judging his past self. So I quite liked that and I did I did just think it was absolutely brilliant. So Great Expectations, if you don't know, is about a young boy called Pip at the beginning of the book, a bit like in Jane Eyre. He's a child. He finds out that he has great expectations that he's due to come into some kind of fortune. He's spent his childhood as the brother-in-law of the blacksmith, thinking that he will go on to be a blacksmith, but he really wants to be a gentleman. And so when he discovers that he is going to be a gentleman and that he has all this money coming to him and he's going to move classes dramatically, it really changes his life and it's just such a brilliant interesting book and so fascinating in terms of looking at Victorian class. The third classic I read in the month of March was Sylvia's Lovers by Elizabeth Gaskell and this was not a reread I'd never read this before. I love Elizabeth Gaskell this is my final Gaskell novel. I think I've now read all of Elizabeth Gaskell's novels. So I did really like Sylvia's Lovers, but it took me a really long time to get into. Like I spent most of the month reading Sylvia's Lovers along with other things. I think it took me about three weeks to read the first half and then it took me about three days to read the second half, which tells you something about how just how brilliant the second half is. And it's really, really gripping from a point about halfway through, but I did find the first half really hard to get into. Sylvia's Lovers is set in a small fishing town in the north of England called Monkshaven, which is based on the town of Whitby. It's set a good while before it was written, it's set in the 1790s and follows the character of Sylvia and the two men who are in love with her. There is a man who is her cousin and her friend who she doesn't really like very much and then there is this new kind of dashing sailor that comes into town that she is very taken with. But anyway, like I said, it took me a long time to get into Sylvia's Lovers. I think there are two main reasons for this. The first is just the dialect. So Gaskell writes all of the characters speaking in a very strong Yorkshire accent and the dialect is written out quite painstakingly and it just makes it really hard to read. I got into it and by the second half I could read it fine but it just meant that for the first half of the book I had to read it so so slowly and it wasn't fully enjoyable because I couldn't really access the dialogue. I think that it's probably one of those books that would be quite good to listen to on audiobook and I think that it probably just kind of depends on the sort of reader you are. Like I know Kate Howe was saying that she didn't have any problems with it at all and it was just fine for her but I think for me I just found it quite quite hard to read. And the other thing I think is that 
I didn't find Sylvia that engaging a character and actually I have decided that that's okay because it's called Sylvia's Lovers and actually it is more about Sylvia's lovers than it is about Sylvia. It's much more about Philip Hepburn, her cousin and friend who is in love with her, than it is about Sylvia. That was how I felt about it, having read the whole book and for me Philip Hepburn was a much more interesting character than anyone else. Sylvia I feel did become more interesting as the book went on but because I didn't find her that exciting or interesting or compelling for the first half and I thought that I was supposed to, I think that was another thing stop me enjoying it that much but anyway I absolutely loved the second half and I thought it was brilliant I found the ending incredibly emotional and moving I think Philip Hepburn is one of my new favorite Gaskell characters because I think he's done really well and he's one of those characters that doesn't always do the right thing but when he doesn't do the right thing you feel that he's let himself down more than you feel that he's a horrible person you just feel like he's gone wrong and I think that was done really really effectively the whole way this book deals with issues of class with issues of that particular time period in the 1790s the fact that it's set in a fishing village like there are so many things I really did love about the book and although it took me a long time to get into it's one of those books that I would really recommend sticking with and yes now that I've read all of Elizabeth Gaskell's novels there will be a Gaskell week at some point probably in September because I think her birthday is in September but I'm already planning for that because I'm excited. I'm hopefully going to try and reread Wives and Daughters and Cranford before then because they are great books anyway. Now on to the contemporary novels. First I finished this month Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows by J.K. Rowling. I listened to this on audiobook and this is a reread for me but it's been a very long time since I read the seventh book. It's been a very long time since I read all of them and I love them so much and I love them much more as an adult than I ever did as a child which I think is kind of lovely. I did enjoy Harry Potter as a child. I read all seven of them and I reread the first six before the seventh one came out but then and that was back in 2007 I hadn't reread any of them until quite recently and I had only read the seventh one once and because I was probably very excited to read the end I think I read it very quickly because I remembered very very little like reading the seventh book of Harry Potter this last month I remember nothing like there were so many things that were surprises to me because I barely remembered anything I think the characterization is so good and I like the fact that Harry changes a lot over the course of the books I think I said a long time ago when I did the Harry Potter tag on this channel I said that Harry Potter was my least favorite thing about Harry Potter but I don't feel that anymore I think I probably appreciate Harry more as an adult than I did as a child and his transformation over the books because I think I find him quite boring in the early books but I think actually by like the fifth sixth seventh book I find him a much more interesting character and a much more compelling character as well as all of the other brilliant characters that are all around there you know who else I love in the seventh book Neville Longbottom one of my favorite characters it's been a thoroughly lovely experience to reread those seven books over the last year and a bit but at some point in the next month I will be finally making that video I've been talking about making for ages comparing JK Rowling with Charles Dickens because they have so much in common and I'm so I'm so excited to make that video I'm really really excited like I've been planning it for months and months and months so I also read Moshi Moshi by Banana Yoshimoto I've talked about Banana Yoshimoto quite a lot on my channel before she's one of my favorite living authors she's a Japanese writer and this is a new translation to English this book hasn't been translated into English before and this came out this new edition came out in January so I have also filmed a Banana Yoshimoto author spotlight which should be going up next week in which I talk in general about why I love this author so much. I did like Moshi Moshi. I think I preferred the first half of the book to the second. There were some bits of the ending that I didn't really like. It's about a young woman whose father dies in complicated circumstances. His body is found in a car with the body of a woman. What the girl and her mother find out is that her father was having an affair with this woman that they didn't know about. And basically, as well as having to deal with the loss of her father and grieving for him, Yoshi also has to deal with the fact that her father was not quite who she thought and that she has to reinterpret everything about their lives together. I think that aspect of the book is done really well. Her grief for her father and especially her relationship with her mother is beautiful. Like I think the relationship with her mother is my favourite part of this book and I love I loved the way they talk, I love their conversations. I think the way that her mother changes after the death of her father and the way that Yoshi reacts to this is just beautiful and really, really well done. The one thing I didn't like was the the ending of the romantic aspect of the plot line I found like the love story aspect of this a bit annoying and I didn't find it that credible and I felt like certain aspects of the close of that part of the book were a little bit overdone and a little bit too unsubtle I don't know I did still really like it and I did think it was really good but it wasn't my favorite Banana Yoshimoto book just because of that ending to the romantic plotline which didn't really blow me away. The next contemporary novel I read was The Space Between the Stars by Anne Corlett. This is an arc, this is a review copy so the final book will actually look like that and it's coming out in June of this year. I was so excited to read this and I'm so excited to tell you about this. One because it is an absolutely brilliant book and two because I also know the author. She was one of the people on my creative writing MA course that I did at Bath Spa about two years ago. I'm going to do a proper individual book review of this as well which should be up on Thursday but suffice to say I loved it a lot. It is kind of Station Eleven in space. 
just giving you a moment to appreciate how awesome that is as a concept. It's about a plague or virus that has wiped out 99.99 9% of the population. But the human population in this world set some way in the future is all spread out across various different planets and it's about one woman, Jamie, who is basically trying to get back to Earth. Space Between the Stars is written beautifully and I think thematically it is so strong. The way it talks about religion, the way it talks about class, the way it talks about family and romantic relationships. I think especially the way it talks about the difference between just surviving and being alive and surviving and making a life for yourself that you can actually live. I think I love The Space Between the Stars for the same reason that I love Station Eleven because it's not, okay, it's the end of the world, how do you survive? It's, okay, it's the end of the world, you survived, what now? Which I think is, in a way, much more interesting to write about and has been written about a lot less. And I just thought that was kind of beautifully done. And it was so moving, like there were some wonderful bits in here. I cried twice and not at the sad bits, which I have to say, I think is more impressive. Like, I think, it's easier as a writer to make people cry at sad things than it is to make people cry at happy things and I cried at happy moments and that, that was good. The other thing I wanted to say, because I thought this was really interesting and I kind of didn't notice it until quite near the end of the book, but because the virus is spread through physical contact, all of the people that survive are people who are not in close proximity to other people, they're people who are loners and outsiders, they're people who were purposefully on their own. What happens if the only people who are left are the people who wanted to isolate themselves from other people? Like, it's just great. Oh, it's so great. Yes, I highly recommend this, it's coming out in June. I think if you like Station Eleven or The Long Way to a Small Angry Planet, you will definitely enjoy this one. Finally, on to short stories and short story collections that I've read in the month of March. So first, just to mention one kind of individual short story that I read in March, and that was Lyra's Oxford by Philip Pullman which is a kind of in-between short story slash novella that um, follows on from his Dark Materials. But I did read Lyra's Oxford when I was a teenager, at least I think I did. I seem to remember that I read it, but listening to it on audiobook as I did the other night, I, I couldn't remember any of it at all. But it's only like an hour on audiobooks, it's a very, very short novella slash short story, and that was just thoroughly enjoyable to read because I love the world of his dark materials, I love the demons, I love the relationship between Lyra and Pan, and I just thought it was such an enjoyable little extra bonus <laughs> short story. It made me so, so excited for The Book of Dust, so yes, I'm, I'm desperately hoping The Book of Dust will be good. And then I read two short story collections this month. So one I read was This Is How You Lose Her by Juno Diaz. This is an interconnected short story collection. And as I've mentioned before on this channel, I love interconnected short story collections. They're like my favorite form because you get the satisfaction of a novel, but also the beauty of short stories. And I love that. And I thought this was wonderful and wonderfully done. The book mainly follows a character called Junior and their, his relationship with various women over the course of his life through from his adolescence into his kind of middle age. He is a horrible character in so many ways. He is a misogynist and he is unkind and he is cruel and he just cheats on all of his girlfriends with so many other women but for all that it's a really brilliant book and there are moments of beauty and I think it's so impressive to do that where there are moments of poignancy and where you really do feel for this horrible man despite the fact that he is so horrible I think it's done brilliantly I also think the voice in this book is so good it was so easy to read I read it basically in one day it was so addictive and thoroughly enjoyable to read and for all that Yunya is sometimes horrible you have these great moments of poignancy that are done so well. The one thing I will say though is there's one short story in this collection, Otra Vida Otra Vez, which wasn't connected to the rest, which wasn't about Yunya and I don't really know why it was there, like it was a good story, I really enjoyed it and it connected with the other stories in terms of themes but all of the rest of the stories deal with the character of Yunya and it felt really weird that that one didn't, like it just felt a bit odd to be there. I was trying to work out if it was in some way connected to Yunya but I don't think it was so I'm a bit bewildered. Anyone else who's read this let me know if you know why that story is there because I couldn't work out what it was doing in there but aside from that I did really love it, I thought the writing was wonderful, the voice is brilliant, the kind of poignancy and emotion of this was so good and I also really enjoy the way Juno Diaz uses second person as well as first person. I thought that was very, very effectively done in this collection. And finally, I read Last Fling by Suji, which I thoroughly, thoroughly loved. This is a brilliant, brilliant short story collection and I think will definitely be one of my favourites. Suji is an author I haven't read anything by for a really, really long time. So I mentioned before that when I was a teenager, between like the age of about 13 and 19, I basically only read 19th century literature. There were probably about 10 books that I read over that time period, 10 novels that were not 19th century. Three or four of which were by Su Ji, who was probably like my favourite living author when I was a teenager. I loved reading in bed, I loved Earth and Heaven, I loved The Mysteries of Glass, like I think she's such a wonderful writer and I just kind of 
forgotten about her until I saw this on my parents' bookshelves because my mum really likes Suji as well and I thought I would pick it up because it was quite slim and I wanted to rediscover some Suji. I then realised after I had picked it up I, that it was a short story collection which is, makes me even happier and it was just absolutely brilliant. This was so good so good. She writes wonderfully, she has a really good turn of phrase and she's brilliant at capturing human relationships, especially friendships. Like one of the things I really liked in this book is that a lot of it was not about romantic relationships but, or family relationships, it was just about friendship, which I feel like you don't get that many stories about and that was really great. I think my favourite two stories were probably the final story, Last Fling, and also the story Days. Days is about a man and his wife, they're both artists and she creates pottery, she makes art with her hands and he's a painter, but he's losing his eyesight, he's slowly going blind, so he can't do his art anymore, but not only can he not do his art, but he also can't see his wife's art, and sharing their art with each other has been such an important part of their life together that now that he can't see her art, it puts not exactly a strain on their relationship, but it changes their relationship, and I just thought it was so beautiful. I didn't realise for quite a lot of the story that he was blind, because Suji writes it so well that she doesn't talk about him not being able to see, she just talks more about the other things he can sense and so it was only like towards the end of the story that I suddenly was like oh no that's that's what it is that's what this story is about and it was just oh it was so good it was one of the best short stories I've ever read and it was so good that I finished reading the story and I went back and read it again right away I don't think I've ever done that with a short story before but my other favourite story was the last one in the story Last Fling which is about two sisters who are in their 60s one of whom has been diagnosed with cancer she decides that she wants this kind of last romantic fling and so she puts like an ad in the newspaper but actually the book isn't about that it's not about like her love life really it's about her relationship with her sister and their friendship and their companionship which I think was done so well and was so beautiful it was just so good like I found it massively massively moving and um, the whole collection I thought was just brilliant. I can't believe I've forgotten about her for the last five years because she's brilliant so yes I'm definitely going to try and read some more Suji at some point soon. So yes those are all the books I read in the month of March as you can probably tell by my general excitement it was a pretty good reading month and I read some wonderful wonderful books both the ones that I was rereading and the ones I was reading for the first time a lot of wonderful books this month. So yes I hope you've had a good reading month in March let me know what your favourite book of the month was and I'll be back very soon with another bookish video. Happy reading!